Hello guys, welcome back to GK Code Labs. This is our next session in our Apache Spark series. And in this series, we are following the official Apache Spark documentation. So till now we have covered till whole file text, like how to read multiple files in a directory in Apache Spark. So moving on from here, next Apache Spark gives us functionality to read sequence files. So if we need to read the sequence files, let me increase the font. So if we need to read the sequence files, same as whole text file, there is a function with spark context we can use sequence file in that we have to pass the key and value pair that we are expecting in the sequence file so if any one of you is not aware what are sequence files let me quickly explain what actually are sequence files and then uh, maybe this key and value what we have to pass will make more sense to you so for some reason this link on uh, apache spark documentation is not working so let's see another official documentation for uh, sequence file. I'll just go through the definition, then I'll explain you a little bit so that it's more clear to you. Sequence file is a flat file consisting of binary key value pairs. It is extensively used in MapReduce as input output formats. So sequence file provide writer, reader and sorter class for writing, reading and sorting respectively. So here you can see the key point is binary key value pairs so let me explain in my words now with a small drawing let's say so let's say we have multiple small files in our hadoop or any big data environment so let's say we have file one then we have file two another file three okay similarly uh, we we can say like we have uh, hundreds or thousands of files so in that case processing such files Hadoop and spark can obviously process like we learned in last tutorial like we can read multiple files in a directory so same way we can do for this also but that is not considered to be uh, very optimal and this kind of uh, read operation of multiple files is very expensive so there is a concept of sequence files in which case uh, what we can do we can merge multiple such files into one big file it's simple till here, right? But here while creating this big file, what we do is in this bigger file, we store it in two values that we consider as key and values. The key is the file name that uh, we are considering. Suppose this file has data A, this has data B, and this has data C. And this file is file one, this is file two, file three. Just a small uh, example I'm giving. So the key will be one and the value will be a. This is for the first file. Similarly, key will be two and value will be b or uh, b1, b2, whatever you can consider b1 and b2 means all the data that is in that file. Key is three and the value is c. But important thing to note here is these particular keys and the values are or can be serialized. So they are stored as a serialized objects. So with the help of serialization, we can compress this bigger file up to a great extent and store all our data, which was in multiple files. So this serialized file that we create is known as a sequence file, which can be compressed to a great extent and uh, which is efficient as far as storage is concerned or uh, the processing of that file is concerned. So I hope you got the basic idea behind the sequence files. Now let's go to Spark documentation once again. So here they are saying, for sequence files, we can use spark context, sequence file and key and value. That is the type of serialized object that we are expecting as a key and type of serialized object that we are expecting as value. You can see here where key, where K and V are types of key and values in the file. These should be subclasses of Hadoop writable interface like int writable and text. So what does this mean? Hadoop's writable interface, so when you are serializing or deserializing this uh, as per your requirement for uh, writing or reading, these should be subclasses of writable interface so that while processing the JVM can understand what type of serialization is to be applied to serialize or deserialize the keys and values. So let's see one small practical of how we can read a sequence file. So currently uh, I don't have a sequence file as of now. So what we will do? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll create some uh, normal text files and we'll try to serialize those files. So it will be better you will know uh, how to create sequential files and also once that file is created we'll try to read that back into a RDD. So let's open my IntelliJ. So for convenience I've already created the boilerplate code. It's uh, very simple like spark conf 
uh, app name and the master values and created a spark context let's suppose we have a few text files uh, day one and it has some values 10 20 30 and some text this is fourth line and another uh, day two that has 100 200 300 now let's consider these two files as what i was explaining these small files so one is day one two is day two dot txt we have currently as of now two files now what we have to do we have to create this sequential file let's see how to do that so let me go to my uh, scala object so first let's read these files normally so val let's say normal file is equal to sc dot uh, these are the normal files so let's uh, read it like text file and let's give the path of this directory the so copy path so like this uh, if we give only till directory all the files data will be read if you are getting confused like uh, in last session we discussed whole text file why we were using that if we can read entire data like with the not normal dot text file if you recall if when we are using whole text file the output that we receive is the file name and the values but in case we are reading entire directory with a text file we'll just get the combined data of all the files without the file names that is that data is coming from so as of now what we have to do we have to read As of now, we just have to read the entire data. So I'm using a text file. So we have our normal RDD and we have to save the data that is in this RDD into a sequential file. So first thing is what we will do. We'll take this RDD. And if you notice here, currently in the normal file, we will have the data something like A, B, B2 and C. Only the data that is there in combined files that we have. But as we have to make the serialize objects that is key and values, we have to tell the RDD or introduce one extra key that we can serialize. Okay. So just to add one more value, what we can do is do a map on this. Let's take the rows as X, X such that every row, every data is X. But what we want is one serialized key. So here is what the writable class comes into play. So for each value, what we want is we have different uh, writables. Uh, let's take uh, null writables as of now. You can uh, use int writable, bytes writable as per uh, the see, as per the value that you want to serialize. So as of now, I don't have any particular requirement. I'll take null writable and with null writable, we need to use get. So this will be my key and what will be my value? Obviously the uh, row that is X. So this, let me put it in bracket. So what this will give us, it will read a normal RDD. It will add one null writable that is a serialized key to each value. And once we have any serializable object, we can save it as a sequence file. So save as there will be a function in sequence file and here we can give the path. So let's say I want to save it inside some same Scala folder. Let's copy path sequence files. So till now I hope uh, you got what the code does. Uh, let us try to execute this first. So for output we can see uh, we didn't get anything uh, anyways that was expected. But under Scala directory if you can see there is a directory sequence file got generated and this has multiple part files. So let's see what this any one of the part file contains. We open it in normal text. So here you can see this is a part of our data that was read uh, combined of this 10, 20, 30, 100, 200, 300. This complete was read as one part in normal file RDD. This RDD. And out of that, some part as per the executors got serialized as per whatever uh, the writable class we used. So we use null writable. So this won't make much sense to you because this is a serialized object. And in the last of that, you can see the actual data. So this part is a serialized object, which is a key. And the last one is the value. We got our sequence file that is in parts. We can merge it, but the key, which is serialized and the value as it is. Let me tell you, there are three kind of sequence file uh, depending upon our condition. We can uh, serialize either of them or both. So that makes it uh, three kinds of sequence files. So here what we have done, we have serialized uh, the key 
and uh, the text as it is now what we have to do uh, let's say we have multiple uh, we got it we got three part files here so let's suppose after uh, making a sequence file out of something or we are getting is at us uh, we are getting it as a source uh, we have got thousands of this and this is something that we have to read into our uh, spark so how we'll do that simple sc dot sequence file sorry sequence file that is what our uh, documentation says spark context sequence file and then key value pair but apart from that obviously you have to give the path of uh, where the part files of sequence files are there or the sequence files are there so let me copy the same path where we have written this was the path so we want to read sequence file which are under this path now comes key and value so what is our key to define the key as we know what was the serialized class uh, that we have used that was null writable so we can mention it like class of and here uh, all the writable types will be available so we used uh, null writable let's use null writable this was our key and what was the value value was a, a normal text so we can mention class of text let me bring it uh, down here that it's all in one place and whatever record that we get from here uh, let's take it as a uh, string so let me map record so that r dot to string let's see uh, although we uh, saw that uh, the sequence files that we generated was not uh, human readable but if we take it through sequence file function uh, do we get the same output that uh, we were expecting so to print this let me do a collect and for each println okay we have already generated the file so uh, i'll comment it there is no use of this now because we already have our uh, sequence files let's try to run this now so you can see here right this was the null key that we assigned uh, to our each uh, row and this was the entire uh, content of the sequence file you can see this was the one single file that was read as a sequence file from the normal text file and these keys can be of different classes uh, it can be int it can be string but all the keys uh, need to be serialized so that was all for sequence files and how we can read the sequence files in apache spark uh, I hope I was able to explain you uh, what the basic idea behind sequence file is and how to operate on sequence files uh, in Apache Spark. So see you guys in my next video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already done and stay tuned to Apache Spark series.